as a kid, I knew a man who lived in New York named Willard Trask. And Willard was a translator of Inuit songs and Inuit stories. And we would visit with each other when I got to the city. Uh, he was much older, and at one of our visits, he mentioned casually he'd love to see the box that Thoreau had made to house his journals. Everybody knows that Thoreau kept journals, but no one knew really much about the box. And having said that, I thought, why don't I make it a quest? So I got permission, because at the time I worked in a library myself, and this box was no more than a half a mile away from where Willard lived, in the Morgan Library. And so we had a letter of introduction, and it even said we wanted to see the box, but when we were there, the younger librarian didn't believe that we wanted to see the box. He thought we wanted to see the journals, so he brought the journals up to us, and we had to wear white gloves to look at them, and he wore white gloves to bring them to us. And I thought of Thoreau in his cabin out in Walden Pond, and um, that's about as far away as you could get from uh, the Morgan Library and the White Clubs. But eventually, the librarian had to confer with another librarian who conferred with a third librarian, and I said to Willard, why do you think they call a group of librarians talking to each other? And he said, a whisper of librarians. And so the outcome of that was the young guy took us down in the stacks, and about five levels down we got to see the box on a shelf, and uh, it tweaked his heart. He loved seeing it, but uh, I forgot to mention that he had emphysema quite badly, so going down those spiral stairs and coming back up was about all he could do that day. And I know that he was very happy, and I didn't get back to New York uh, for some time, and during that time he died, and he took with him the fascination he had for Thoreau's box. But for me, to see its dinged, pine nature, just a simple box with a handle, and a front that went down with a latch, so you could see the spines of the journals, so he could carry it around like a carpenter's box, put it on a desk and see all the journals that he wanted to edit again. There's no writer who spent more time creating himself as a representative and spokesman for his neighbors, for his town, and for nature.